India, China and Russia. In geopolitical terms, it can be a huge mistake to underestimate or ignore their collective strength. The Ukraine-Russia conflict has the potential to permanently change the global geopolitical balance and that is why it is very important that the USA and Europe deal with this situation extremely carefully. We, the global community, cannot afford to ignore this. There may be only three of them, but their sheer collective power can easily make anyone nervous. Want to know why? Consider this. Together, the Russia-India-China trio, or the RIC countries, cover a total landmass of nearly 30 million square kilometers. It means that together, the RIC countries occupy over 19% of the global landmass. These countries are connected by land, from the Arctic to all the way to the Indian Ocean. And now consider this, these three countries contribute to over 33% of global GDP. Add to this that together, Russia, India and China make up more than 38% of the entire world's population. Yes, that is more than 38% of the whole of humanity. Furthermore, Russia and China are permanent members of the UN Security Council, while India aspires to be one. And let's not forget that the RIC forms the core of both the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and the BRICS. Now, let's take a quick look at the 2022 military strength ranking. Russia sits at second position, China third and India fourth. So, collectively, the military power of the RIC is absolutely staggering. It must not be forgotten that all three are nuclear powers and all three have their own super-advanced space agency. Of course, India objects to the violence currently occurring in Ukraine and the USA seems to desperately want India to be on its side. What is very striking, however, are the friendly gestures towards India from its neighbor China. Take a look at this. An article on the Chinese state-affiliated media outlet states that both India and China are under pressure from the West and that both countries share common interests on many fronts. On the other hand, in Russia, in March 2022, the director of a Moscow-based leading research institute gave a public lecture on the topic Russia, the USA and China in the changing world order and the institute's research fellow Gleb Makarevich mentioned in his article that old friends are best. Only a few days later, the Russian foreign minister visited India during the ongoing Ukraine-Russia conflict and spoke of developing Russia-India-China trilateral mechanism, adding that the three countries have a lot of plans. In order to understand the so-called Russia-India-China trilateral mechanism better, here is a very quick introduction to the RIC trilateral history. RIC came together as a strategic triangle in the late 1990s under the mentorship of Yevgeny Primakov as a counterbalance to the Western alliance. India co-founded the RIC Trilateral Forum in 2001 and its first meeting at foreign ministerial level was held in September 2001. India's participation in the RIC serves as a symbolic example of its commitment to its policy of multi-alignment and it has been observed that India has used the Trilateral Forum to advance its counter-terrorism agenda. The Forum also allows India to remain in dialogue with China even if their bilateral relationship worsens. Now, take a look very carefully at the official statement from the 18th meeting of the foreign ministers of Russia, India and China. You will see, they are talking about a reformed multilateral system and the need for comprehensive reform of the UN, including its Security Council. Also, pay attention to this. They are also against the imposition of unilateral sanctions beyond those adopted by the UNSC. Regarding India and China, Leonid Fituni observes that the last couple of centuries have been a time of degradation and humiliation for these two great nations. In the eyes of the Chinese and the Indians, this was inextricably linked to the Western expansion, colonialism and imperial dominance. However, this time, India appears better prepared because it seems to be using its intelligence rather than letting itself be ruled by emotion. Very carefully and cautiously, India has crafted its foreign policy, which as you can see here, has come a long way from non-alignment to multi-alignment and even involves the complicated task of managing multiple overlapping alignments. 
If India participates in RIC, BRICS, and Shanghai Cooperation Organization, then it also shows positive signs towards Quad and the Japan-India-US grouping. Yes, New Delhi may have a special relationship with Moscow, but it hasn't forgotten the humiliating or uncomfortable times when the overwhelming Soviet influence had been allowed to penetrate deep into its system. India may be with China on several forums, but it cannot ignore China's unreliability and unpredictability either. However, let's not forget that this new India is different, and so is its attitude. That is why for the Russian foreign minister, the term Asia-Pacific region may be more suitable, but it seems that the Indian people would still refer to it as the Indo-Pacific region. On the other hand, deep down, the West has realized that it needs India on its side, especially with regard to its long-term competition with China. But if the West finally learns how to behave more respectfully and carefully with India, India's foreign policy does offer issue-based partnerships. And yes, there is enough space for the West to operate too. The days of Western hegemony are disappearing, and if the conditions are right, India can be the bridge and even the peacemaker between the Western democracies and others. But if the West misses this opportunity, it could push India farther away, and in that process, the West may lose the golden opportunity to bring the geopolitical stability that India wants to offer to our fractured world. And yes, for the West, it would be better if the RIC trio is never able to reach its full potential. See you again!